This essay example, as well as thousands of others, is available in text format on our website for free and without registration. Simply Google Ivy Panda Free Essays. Background The practice of elimination and reduction of loss of property and life due to catastrophes have become common in areas prone to natural disasters. Many organizations have embarked on emergency management programs by boosting and creating awareness of mitigation. Risk analysis on physical constructions should be carried out to reduce physical threats. Besides, participatory mechanisms, public commitment, knowledge development, policy formulation, and awareness among other non-structural mitigation methods are necessary to reduce the impact of disasters. Structural mitigation Physical constructions have been used as elements of mitigation and have helped reduce and protect against potential impacts of hazards. Perry, Prater, and Lindell indicate that structural mitigation through the construction of protective infrastructure and hazard-resistant structures has been relied upon by many nations and communities for defensive and shielding purposes. These nations have set up legislations that are geared towards ensuring the effectiveness of both structural and non-structural mitigation activities. The legislation has been observed in seismic areas where building codes and land use regulations have been set in place. In addition, Perry, Prater, and Lindell argue that the collapse of buildings and subsequent damage to infrastructure and structures commonly occur in the event of landslides, floods, earthquakes, and other disasters. These are some of the factors that call for the effecting of structural mitigation practices purposely to save lives and property by reducing damages. Countries in seismic areas have embarked on the construction, maintenance, and designing of their structures to ensure the safety of their citizens. Through their civil engineers, they have retrofitted and strengthened old structures. In addition, they have designed canals, roads, and new buildings. Additionally, the model of mitigation and adaptation highlights that there are diverse ways through which disasters can be alleviated. This is largely due to the presence of technology, detectors, and experts on climate change and environmental management. Predictions on possible threats due to climate changes and other related catastrophes based on the scientific investigation are critical for setting up strong and protective infrastructures. The enormous arrays of resources within governments set up to warn and protect are critical in developing structural mitigation capabilities. Non-structural mitigation Perry, Prater, and Lindell indicate that non-structural mitigation practices aimed at minimizing the consequence of disaster are cost-effective. They include the provision of information on the reduction of risk, participatory mechanisms, public commitment to ensuring safety, the creation of awareness, and better policies. Many nations have set up regulations that control the activities that individuals, groups, and industries undertake. Besides, the use of temporary restriction methods such as avalanche warning signs and flood barriers to limit risks to admissible levels has been common. Planning, land use regulation, Determining locations of human activities and settlement as well as trainings on hazards have been set up as non-structural mitigation methods to reduce risks. In seismic zones, non-structural mitigation has been a practice that involves anchoring and bracing household, industry, and office items to prevent falls, injuries, and damages. Items that are normally used include support systems, brackets, anchors, and tie-downs. Perry, Prater, and Lindell highlight that activities related to non-structural mitigation are generally inexpensive, easy to apply, and effective in saving lives. To sum up, it is imperative to highlight that both structural and non-structural mitigation activities are necessary for minimizing risks and safeguarding lives and property from damages. However, non-structural mitigation has been a common practice due to its simplicity and cost-effectiveness. Most structures constructed in disaster-prone areas use non-mitigation strategies to affect safety. Even so, there is still a need for governments to set up effective policies on environmental management to curb the rise of disasters due to climate change. 
If you want to find more works like this essay critical writing on the impact of disasters, structural and non-structural mitigation, head over to ivypanda.com. It has a collection of samples with thousands of submissions covering virtually all academic subjects.